guys and welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you a spoiler free review of Vasilisa by Julie Matheson. This book was sent to me for review by the author but uh, if she hadn't offered it I would have begged for it so I am very excited to be reviewing this book. This is an independently published middle grade novel that is set in Slavic folklore but also in 1920s America so during the Great Depression and essentially we have Vasilisa who is the daughter of a soldier who has not returned from home from war and uh, she lives with her mother and her grandmother and her grandmother tells her all of the tales of old Rus because they are of Russian heritage um, and she lives in a community that seems to have quite a lot of people who are also of Russian heritage. So they all have this kind of shared community bond as well. In this story, Vasilisa discovers that she essentially must be the one to save her family from this curse. Essentially, her grandmother was telling her tales that then turned out to be something she herself would need to accomplish. Um, I can't go much further into talking about this book, but on the back, it um, also mentions a boy named Eden, so uh, a boy named Ivan, who arrives in Edenfall, which is the village that Vasilisa lives in, and completely up, uproots her world and will also accompany her on her quest to Old Rus. We have so many different types of folkloric elements, both Slavic and just general European, including uh, dragons, for example. We have a three-headed dragon in this. We have sentient wolves. We have ogres, sort of. We have... Um, we have Baba Yaga, but she is actually uh, Baba Yaga and her two sisters. So we have like the three witches type tales that we tend to get a lot in European history as well. So it is absolutely full to the brim of folkloric elements. And then on top of that, we have the historical elements of the original setting before she has to return to Old Rus, in which she is a, a girl living in the 1920s with a mother who is rather considered single in the despite the fact that Vasilisa believes her father to be alive because he's missing in action and they are worried about going into debt her mother has a suitor but at the same time is torn because she wants to believe that her husband is alive but wants to keep her home and make sure that her family are not destitute um, and then there is her grandmother who is fantastic so we have a beautiful blend of historical fiction and fantasy. So we get to see two different aspects that I really enjoy within middle grade, especially, but within fantasy and fiction in general. In this story, we see an awful lot of different interpersonal relationships, friendships, mother daughter bonds, family units. Um, we see a romantic relationship and romantic relationships are not often depicted in middle grade in my personal experience and as much as they are possibly overdone elsewhere in middle grade we don't get a huge amount of, of representation in terms of the build-up of a relationship normally it's just at the very end the princess finds her prince and happily ever after in this one we see two children come to care for each other and then eventually fall in love and so you get much more of a build-up of romance than you would normally get and I really genuinely appreciated that. Um, that does not mean that it's always good to have conclusive endings. And I think that this addresses that very well. You know, it's not you don't have to end up with the first person you fall in love with. Um, so I there are lots of elements to this book that I just think are absolutely spectacular. I read it for Polarthon and it was a perfect book for Polarthon. If a book surpasses this book this year for my favourite book of the year, I will be surprised because obviously, as I said, we have all of the folkloric elements, we have the historical elements, and then on top of that, we have the interpersonal relationships, which I absolutely adored 
I believed all of them. I found the, the friendships, the romance, the family relationships to all be genuine and believable and understandable with the usual amount of flaws and issues without it need without those being there solely as a plot device at no point do i feel like miscommunication or or an argument of any kind was there solely as a plot device everything seemed to have a purpose not only within the narrative but also as an accurate depiction of the characters relationships which i think is a very important thing to do instead of just well these two people fight a lot because that suits my narrative or these two people love each other because it suits my narrative and there was a lot of care given given how short the book is to to enhance the motivations the reasoning behind each type of relationship and that I thoroughly thoroughly appreciated. Another thing as well that I absolutely adored about this book was the setting. I found both the American setting in Edenfall and the then Old Russ setting that we have later on in the narrative to be very immersive, very beautiful. They didn't require over description for you to understand what she was trying to say, which I think is very important within middle grade literature, because with middle grades, obviously you do need to understand that you need to retain the attention of your audience. And I think that she did that very well. She made a very, very clear image with a few words. And I think that is fantastic. And all of this magic and all of this beauty wrapped into uh, Julie Matheson's amazing writing style. In my review for her previous book, her debut novel, Believe, I raved about her book from the tops of the buildings. I wanted everyone to read Believe because I went into Believe very, very sceptical. It seemed like something that was quite cute. I didn't think that I would love it, but it seemed quite cute and I thought, okay, well, I'll give it a go. I got it on NetGalley, why not? And I adored it and I don't read contemporary middle grade. It's just not something that I gravitate towards generally. There are a couple here or there I'll make an exception for, but generally I don't read contemporary middle grade. And then a debut in the author, I thought, eh, how good can it really be? It was fantastic. Her writing style is fantastic. So then to hear that she was getting this book out, which completely fits everything that I look for in middle grade, between the folklore and the whimsy and the fantasy, all tied in and all grounded with, with a, a historical backdrop, I just thought was phenomenal. So seeing how people lived historically was would be great for kids but then also it's not just forced upon you you get the whimsical and magical side to it and i think that it was just tied in perfectly with the beautiful bow that is julie matheson's amazing writing style because she manages to make a beautiful story come even more beautiful through the writing and yet at no point is it pretentious at no point is it difficult to read it's just, it's just beautiful. It's an amazing book. I can understand how some people might not like it on the basis that it is a fairy tale style story. So there are certain elements of it that are possibly predictable. But I do feel like a lot of the time, Julie Matheson takes a trope and she doesn't insult it. She doesn't take it and go, yeah, actually you believe this, but actually no, it's this. Instead, she takes a trope and is like, yes, this happens, but here is a bit more to it. There's a little more to it. There's a little bit more elements to it. And I just thought that that was fantastic. And I, I really appreciate that she respected the genre enough to not muck its tropes while still making it enough her own where the tropes aren't tired. And I... I love that. I I loved the ending. I'm not going to lie. The ending was was so beautifully written and it 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 was one of those where I I, I wanted to hug the book. I I don't even know if that makes sense. But I just it was just cute like it was one of those that was just like so adorable and so cute and so heartwarming and I just I just kind of I finished the book kind of like this 
and and that was how I felt. And and if you if you've read a book like that, or if you read middle grade, because it happens a lot, you'll know how I you know what I mean. I felt the same way about um, Sophie Anderson's books. You just you get to the end and you're like, I'm not okay, <laughs> but because because of it's sweet, not because it's hard or harrowing or broken you. It's just it's sweet, and you just you just want to hug it. And I, I appreciated that as well. I like endings that can make me feel that way in my middle grade. That's what I turned to middle grade for. The female friendship between Evelyn, uh, well, between the protagonist Vasilisa and her best friend Evelyn was also very interesting because, again, she didn't really do any of those really bitchy tropes of, you know, girls that fall out over catty reasons kind of thing. Um, she didn't have the them become antagonizing towards each other or anything and at the same time it didn't have this best friends forever perfect image where no one can ever be at fault and you just have this perfect friendship where you can read each other's minds which is normally what happens when you are reading about girls more often than not you find that female friendships either have to be absolutely perfect or have to be mean and bitchy and I really appreciated that in Vasilisa, it was a genuine female friendship. It was, sometimes people make mistakes, sometimes there are errors, sometimes things happen, sometimes you have conflicting interests or opinions, and that's okay. And then at the same time, you don't have to loathe each other for it. You don't have to then try and destroy each other's lives for it. And I genuinely appreciated that. I think it's important for young girls to see themselves in a in a more realistic way a, a more realistic standard it's not if this girl isn't the most perfect best friend you have ever had then she's a terrible friend it's okay you human beings you need to resolve things sometimes same as you do with any other person your best friend cannot be held to this perfect immaculate and unascertainable standard then at the same time that does not make her your arch nemesis So I genuinely appreciated that. And then the the grandmother is just absolutely adorable in this book. You know, little old, old Russian grandmothers that you read about, like, like Baba in, um, which one are you? House with Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson. Just that adorable but feisty grandmother that seems that is the Russian grandmother trope. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that. I really like the grandmother. The possible only notable downside to it is that the villain is quite the moustache twirly villain, I suppose. Um, but it's a middle grade. So at the same time, I understand not wanting to make a more complex villain because, well, you don't want to scare your kids away. Um, so I appreciate that. And I understand that that might not be something for everyone. Um, or it might at least be a point against the novel in general. Um, it didn't affect my enjoyment at all. I still absolutely adored it. And I found that the villain was fine. Like I didn't need more from him but I understand how a lot of people might. So that's one thing that I suppose could technically be considered a criticism or at least fair warning for anyone else. Um, but yeah, anyway, this book is being released tomorrow as of when this video goes up. Today's the 22nd of February, if I have got everything under control on my upload schedule and therefore this book is actually releasing tomorrow. Today, Anytime during today, there is a sort of uh, book launch party that you can just go watch a video by the author. I will leave that linked in the description down below, but it is only available for today. So for this 24 hour period. So if you want to watch it, you will need to watch it probably right after watching this video. I will also leave purchase links and the author's website down in the description box below in case you want to get your hands on your own copy. I also have links to both my blog post that has gone up at the same time as this uh, to uh, also discuss Vasilisa and also down below I have a 
uh, link to my review of Believe, which, again, I, I really appreciated um, and I absolutely adored. So, you know, if you if this author is someone that you are interested in, then you can go check out her other work as well. This one is the first book in a series. I haven't found out exactly how many books are intended to be in the series yet, but it is the first book in a series. Um, I don't think that we will necessarily be following these characters again. It's more just the world, which I think I kind of like because I like how that book concluded and I have no need to disturb or disrupt those characters again. It's just more the setting and going back to it and it feeling kind of homely to return to the setting for me personally. But yes, if you liked this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to, hit the bell icon if you want to get notified every time I post a new video. Let me know in the comments down below which type of folklore is your favourite to read about and see depicted, uh, because Slavic is definitely up there for me personally. Slavic and Celtic are probably my favourites. But let me know, what kind of folklore do you like seeing in your folkloric retellings? And yeah, that is it from me today. In the description box, you will also find links to my Twitter, Instagram and Goodreads in case you want to get in touch, you know, you want to chat, whatever. Also, on a side note, I am currently uh, having uh, preparations for my readathon, which is Femathon, which starts as of the 1st of March, so next week. And if you are interested in joining Femathon, then my announcement video is up here. And Vasilisa would actually work for multiple of the prompts for it including Femme Positive, um, what else, Femme Fights Back, and fe Platonic Female Relationships, as well as just the wild card. So if you are interested in any of that, then Femathon announcement is available. And yeah, thank you ever so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye, guys!